Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about seven things about being a published author I wish I would have known before I got there. So if it sounds like something you're interested in, why don't you stick around? If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me. And um, hit the ringer bell for notifications so you know when I have a new video coming out. We'll get started here in just a moment. So, yes, seven things that I wish I would have known before I actually entered the arena as a published author. Now, it wouldn't have stopped me. It wouldn't have made me go, forget it, I'm not going to do this. But it would have prepared me a little bit better. And this is for both trad and indie. Um, I think it would have helped me almost more in trad for some of them because I really didn't expect a whole lot that was going to happen. Get started with number seven. At some point, you will always wonder if you're an imposter. Now, some authors, this lasts a long time through their career. For me, it was when I finished the first book and sold it, and I was like, oh my God, can I do this again? Is this going to be a fluke? Am I going to be able to come up with a second book? And after I came up with the second one and I wrote it, it was like, okay, well, can I do a third? And that calmed down as I went along. But when I jumped to New York and started in fiction from a small press nonfiction, um, even though I had written novels before, when I got a three book contract right off the bat, it was like, oh my God, can I do three books on the same character? I've got the first. Can I write the second? Can I write it in time? Can I write it about the same character? Am I going to get bored? And that, that was scary. By the third book, the third novel, which was Murder Under a Mystic Moon, it wasn't quite as internally, I wasn't processing it as internally as I had before. But then every time I started a new series, I felt like that again. And I still sometimes do. It's like, can I write this? You know, it's like, oh my God, can I do as well as I did before? Can I write a better book than I did before? And there are always going to be fluctuations. Some books will be better, some will be worse. You do your best with each one that you can do. That's all that anybody can ask. But um, for the most part, I have conquered most of my imposter syndrome, but it still kicks in now and then. So don't be surprised if you find that fear coming up. Of, oh my God, are people going to find out that I'm just, I'm a, I'm a fake, you know? And you're not. You have written the books. You have done the work. You have what it takes. Number six. Being an author takes more work than you will ever think it does. It involves more hours, more work. You cannot just write. You cannot just sit down and write the book and be done with it. You, Whether you are trad or indie, you have to market. You have to promote. You have to do the research. You have to do the outreach. You have to wear more hats than just the writer hat. Nobody I know can wear just their writer hat anymore. You have to be there to do all the rest of the, the work. So be prepared for more work than you expected. It will take more time than you think. Number five, being a published author means that your head will be on the chopping block. I don't care what you write. I don't care how many people read your work. At some point, somebody somewhere is going to hate your book, and they're going to tell you, and they are going to tell you in very mean, nasty ways. And somebody somewhere is going to take that dislike further and hate you, and they will tell you. Um, it's not as much fun as I'm making it sound out sound to be. It is really unpleasant. It is a blow to the ego, but it's more than that. It's almost an invasive feeling. It's like, 
I don't go up to a stranger who I've never met and tell them, I hate what you do. Well, yes, I do. I have to admit, I do that to Donald Trump now and then. But I don't go up to an artist whose work I don't like and tell them, I hate your work. That's counterproductive. There is nothing to be gained by that. There is nothing to be gained by me telling someone I didn't like the book that I read. I just go read a different book. I may not, I may give the author a second chance if I still don't like it. I, I drop that author and I go on to a new one. And I don't, I don't think a second thought about it. However, there are some people that seem to really delight in making other people miserable and letting you know just how much they don't like your work. So be prepared for it. And the best thing you can do is just take a deep breath and walk away. Don't engage. Do not engage the trolls. Do not engage the people who want an argument because you will be the one who looks bad. I guarantee you that. No matter how rude they are, you will end up on the chopping block if you engage. Um, and you will get called names at times, you know. I have been called because of Camille and her husbands and because of my tendency to write alternative sexualities. I have been called whore, slut, cunt, and all sorts of wonderful words. And I may bleep out some of those, but I'm not monetizing this video, so I may not bleep them out. Uh, number four, you'll fall in love with some of your characters. And some of your characters you'll decide you really don't like. And I'm not talking just the villains there. I'm saying that sometimes you'll come across a character who you just adore writing and you love writing. And it's hard to make things nasty happen to them. But you need that conflict. And then sometimes you'll start out really loving a character and you'll end up going, I'm not sure I like them anymore. Um, it just happens. As they evolve, your feelings will change toward the characters you write. Um, and some you will really struggle with. I always struggled with Delilah. She was a very hard character for me to write. She drove me nuts. And she's not someone who I would probably hang out with in real life. Except when she was in cat form. Camille? I understood to the core. Ember, I understand. I love Raven. I absolutely love Raven. Um, I wasn't fond of Shimmer that much. I mean, I liked her, but I felt distant from her. And part of that was because they had me change the books, um, the first book, and change the um, relationship between her and Alex. I had it so that they did not get together until the very end of the first book. And that felt natural to me. The publisher made me change it so they were together at the beginning of the book. And it never felt natural. And it felt forced. And I felt like I was forcing them into it. And that's another reason why I could probably never write another fly-by-night book. It just felt forced. And I felt like I was pushing the characters to do something they wouldn't normally do. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll fall in love with some of your characters. And sometimes it will hurt when people say they hate them. Or they can't stand that character. Or, you know, they, they like another character better that you don't like as much. It's just part of life. You just have to accept it and realize that because you know these characters on an internal level, you'll always feel differently about them than your readers will, to a degree. Number three, you'll find your own pace, you'll find your own rhythm. There's not much you can do to change that. You can learn ways to be more efficient. You can learn ways to um, cut down on revisions and stuff. But every writer has their own pacing when they write. I am prolific. I am quick. I consider myself lucky. That's just my nature. Some writers take a year to write a book. That is just their nature. They can't write any faster. 
even if they had the, all the time in the world, they may not be able to write any faster. Where I can write a lot faster than some authors because it's just part of who I am. It's not worse. It's not better. You know, for me, I consider it better. But it's just an innate ability. Your, your speed as an author is an innate ability and do not compare yourself to others. You will, you will go down a very rough patch if you do that. You will find yourself lacking if you do that because there's always, always going to be somebody faster, more successful, um, more popular. And if you let envy and regret rule your writing, your writing will cease to be a, a point of joy for you. It will cease to be something you like to do. And you really need to love what you're doing, especially with writing, because it's such a hard thing. I will tell you one way to deal with envy. And I found this years and years ago when I was still struggling to get published. I had a friend who was, she was kind of a mentor and she was, oh, she had sold her 10th book. And I was just like, oh, I wish I could sell a book. You know, I was so upset. I really, really wanted that. And then, and then it suddenly dawned on me that I could be happy for her. And I could still want the same thing for me. And it didn't cancel out either one of those things. So I realized that you can be happy for someone while still wanting similar success for yourself. It doesn't take away from them and it doesn't, you don't feel the need to tear them down because it's two separate things. Yes, I'm very thrilled that they made the list. They did, they did this. They sold that many copies. I would like that for myself. That doesn't mean that I don't want them to have it. And if you can get into that mindset, you're going to be a much happy, happier writer. And you will make friends that you will be able to keep. If you are envious of your friends, if you are jealous of your friends, and you don't want them to have that success, they're not going to be your friends much longer. You really need to come to a peace and realize that you're not who they are. Your path is different than theirs. Your success will be different than theirs. It's okay to want that success. It's okay to really wish you had, you know, those big deals or that you were selling that many copies or that you could write that many books. It's okay to want that, but it, it's not okay to let it destroy a friendship or let it destroy you inside and eat you up. So try to find a way to be at peace with it. Realize that you have your own pace. You are on your own path. Your path is not somebody else's path. You cannot write the books that they can write. They cannot write the books that you write. And let it be. Number two. The more successful you get, the less you feel like you need to tell people about it. When I first sold my first few books, I told everybody, I'm an author. I'm an author. You know, and I was just like, yeah, I'm an author. And I saw this, you know, it's like, I was so excited. And that's okay. That's fine. But I found that the more successful I got, the more reticent I've gotten. And I think it's, it's that I'm more comfortable in my own skin with where I'm at. It's like, I feel like I have succeeded. Um, I may not be to the success level I want yet, but I have succeeded. And that means that I don't feel the need to prove myself. And I think that's what some of that was for me at least. It may not be for you. Um, was a feeling of needing outer validation. Now it's like, I, I love hearing from my readers. I love hearing what my books mean to my readers. I really do, but I don't need that constant validation. Uh, sometimes it's funny, I'll be out and I'll be talking with someone, you know, we'll be chatting for a while and they'll go, oh, what are you doing? It's like, I'm an author. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, have you published many books? Yeah, about 65. And it's not that I'm being modest. It's just sort of like, it is what it is. It is who I am. It doesn't change the fact that I like to get my nails done. It doesn't change the fact that um, I enjoy going out and watching dogs run around a park or whatever. You know, it's, it's just part of who I am. And I don't necessarily feel the need to broadcast it a lot. Um, so I think you'll find that as you grow more successful, that comfort level of being comfortable with where you're at will grow. And the number one thing I wish I would have known, at times your writing will be a source of intense joy and comfort for you. And hopefully much more than the times when it is almost like a punishment. Um, sometimes those words don't come easy and sometimes you're scrambling to make a deadline and even an indie if you've got a pre-order up you've got to make that deadline and sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get the words out because you just want to go watch Netflix and sit there all day and, and you know have fun but in the end the words the words will matter more to you than just about anything. Your stories, the stories that flow through you, that flow through your head, that are in your heart, that you tell with your heart, those stories mean more than the success. And they mean more than the sales. And they mean more than any accolades or awards. Being able to tell those stories. And it's almost like a an odd double-edged sword there because like to be able to tell as many stories as I want to I need to make a living off of them I couldn't write you know even a third of what I write now if I had to do a different day job so yes I need to make a living off my work but I want to make a living off of it because it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do because I want to keep telling stories you know so yeah the words and the stories always are at the core of it they're always at the heart and that's what matters so i think that's going to be it for today you know this top seven things i wish i would have known um, about being a published author years ago when i was struggling and when all that mattered was getting published to me you know, the work mattered, writing mattered, but what was so important in my mind was getting published. And now it's like, what's so important in my mind is, yeah, staying published so I can continue to write. Because I want to write those words. I want to write those stories. I want to tell you and show you the worlds that exist in my head. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um... So, I'm not sure what we'll do next week. Um, maybe another magical video. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week to come. And stay safe and, you know, be careful out there. It, things have not gotten a whole lot better in terms of the virus and they've gotten a whole lot worse in some places. Um, and if you are a writer, remember the words are what matter, the language is what matters, the stories, those stories, that's the core of what matters with our work. You know, telling the stories and telling them the best way we can and giving our readers the best book we can at the moment. And maybe sometimes it won't be quite as good as another book, but you know, that's the vagaries of life. So yeah, remember, uh, before you go, remember I have a Patreon page, and the link is below in the description. And you can find the upcoming books and pre-orders, and recently available books in the description, as well as my website and my mailing list. So stick around, and you know, I'll see you next week, and you take care. Bye-bye.